So you want to get over your approach anxiety or you just want to learn to approach people better. In this video, I'm going to cover how to tell if you're feeling approach anxiety, how to know if somebody's approachable, how to make a conversation is going once you've approached them and, once you, and also how to know when you should leave that situation once things are going south or she's losing interest. At the end of this video, I'm going to recommend a book that if you want to take your, say, reading, your body language reading skills to the next level, this is a book that you must read. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the stream. It's your man Don. And we do appreciate you guys tuning in for the last live stream. We really do appreciate it. Because actually, this is a question that came from Friday's live stream. And the question is, how? okay, this is about a lady. She had two, two sons and they're afraid of approaching women. In fact, she said that unless a woman approaches them, they don't approach a woman, which I do understand. In today's climate, it make, things are kind of difficult to really know how to approach properly. Because if I'm being honest, sometimes if you're not attractive or if she's not attracted to you, you're gonna come up as creepy. And that's kind of how it is. We're kind of stuck in this weird box right now that nobody, unless you're, you know, a good looking male feels comfortable approaching women. In this video, I'm actually gonna break that down entirely on how you can go from not being able to approach and also being able to approach women. And the secret ingredient in that whole thing is body language. You need to be able to read body language. First thing, what is approach anxiety? This is basically when you feel uncomfortable confronting another person or approaching another person. Simple as that. So why do you feel that way? Think about it. One of the main reasons you feel that way is one, you're afraid of judgment. And two, you're going into a place you've never been before. When you're doing something new in any scenario, you're, when you're faced with an encounter that your brain hasn't seen before, what happens is your body goes into something called the general stress response. And so you have neurons firing in all directions because they don't know what the problem is. Imagine watching a scary movie, all right? And let's say I, right, right after that, watching that movie, you hear like something go bang upstairs. Right away, you're gonna be in panic mode because you don't know what that could be. It could be a burglar, it could be a ghost, it could be your pet, it could just have been the wind. You just don't know. So what happens is your body starts firing all these neurons so you can be ready for anything. And that's kind of why you feel stressed whenever you, you're about to approach somebody because you don't know what's gonna happen and that unknown is what scares you. The second part of this is fear of judgment. Judgment, honestly, is something that a lot of human beings have used to kind of keep all the human beings in tab. When you judge somebody, you kind of tell the person, hey, okay, if you're doing something right, I, you, you're gonna have a positive response to that person. And if they're doing something wrong, you're gonna have a negative response to that person. And this is how us as human beings keep tabs on each other. For example, when you do something I don't like, I'm going to give you a funny look. When you do something I do like, then I'm a lot more welcoming to you. Same thing for everybody else you encounter. And as you see how people react to you doing various things, especially as a young person, then you start see seeing those things that are good and those things that are not good. And you start making a little map of the world in your brain. So you know, okay, if I do these things, people like it. If I don't do these things, people hate it. So that's basically what judgment is for. When it comes to confrontation and approach anxiety in general, most of the time you're not really being you're not really scared of the person you're approaching. What's happening is you're you don't know what you're gonna expect, so your brain is getting prepared for everything. But you're always looking at the worst thing, meaning a negative response from this person. For example, you can approach a person, let's say a guy approaches a girl, and the worst he could get is well, let's say the best you could get is a hell yeah. The worst you could get is a hell no. And that scares a lot of people. So I'm gonna go into how you can start the, the prepared state, all right? There are three Ps when you're trying to learn anything. Prepare, practice, persist. Three Ps. Keep that in mind when you're studying for anything, exam, school, learning a new hobby, whatever. How do you prepare to approach somebody? First thing is your appearance. You gotta make sure you at least look the part. And this isn't a superficial-esque thing. Actually, it's not. It's really saying that, okay, does this person in front of me have enough respect for me 
to at least approach me decently. For example, women, you can get different responses if somebody comes and says hi versus cat calls you. Of course, this isn't based on their appearance, of course, but it's just a respect part. You know, it's all about respect in that part. So if you approach somebody, actually think about it yourself, man. If somebody approaches you and they look all bummy, it could be a guy or a girl, doesn't matter. If they approach you and they don't look, they didn't even take the time to look decent for you, right away, your brain just goes, no. It doesn't matter that this person hasn't said anything. It doesn't matter that you don't know anything about this person. It immediately, your brain analyzes them based on their appearance, they say no. So the first thing, man, you need to do when approaching in general is make sure your appearance is on point. If you want a little bit of tutorial on what you can do to spruce up your appearance, like I'm not really, I don't really do a lot personally in terms of, um, I guess, fashion. All you really need to do is, personally, I just say work out a little bit. If you need, we can put out, put out a workout a tutorial. But honestly, you just gotta take the time to make sure your looks are up to snuff. Second thing is you have to know the right time to approach the person. This goes for anybody because people have different things you go, that's going on in their lives. For example, I may have just been fired from work and you came to approach me with the purest intent, intent ever. And I'm going to be mad. I'm going to give you that devil stare bitch look. I am not kidding because I'm not in the mood at all to start dealing with anything after that. So what you have to do when you see you want to approach somebody, look at their body language. Does this person look like they're ready to be approached right now? One of the easy parts you can tell if a person is really willing to be approached or not is their face. Okay, are they smiling? Do they look happy? Do they look angry? Do they look sad? A lot of the time, I do agree, you know, using just the face can be deceiving because a lot of people can kind of put on a mask as they go about the day. But the second method I'm going to give you is a lot more almost guaranteed for you to tell what kind of mood that a person is in. The next piece of body language that you should look out for when you're trying to see if you should approach a person or not is how their stance is. For example, people have two stances, an open stance and a closed stance. An open stance means that they're willing to enc encounter new things. They're willing to communicate with other people. They're willing to be social. A closed stance, however, means that they don't want to do any of that. They just want to go home, turn on the TV, snuggle in bed, and go to sleep. So how can you tell if somebody is in an open stance or a closed stance? First off is look at your arms. Normally people can have will have their arms by their side. But if for any reason their arms crosses here, here in any way crosses the line of symmetry of the body, which is the, the line that goes directly half through the body, it means that they're in a defensive stance. So you can think of it this way. As animals, our weakest spot is in our middle. So because we have our heart. We have other important organs in here and we don't want this part to get damaged. You can think about it this way. Whenever you were outside, think about this, it probably happened to you. When you were outside and you, something startled you, like someone came out of the bushes and yelled in your face. It's Halloween, so that's probably going to be happening a lot. So someone came out of the bushes and yelled in your face or something just shocked you or you heard a shot somewhere, a gunshot or somewhere or something like that. Keep looking at your reaction. The first thing you do is something like this or this whatever way it is what's going to happen is your body is going to twist into itself and your arms are going to go over to protect this middle part of your body that is a defensive stance so some people when they're in a closed stance they kind of they exhibit those defensive behaviors sometimes you see women walking and their arms are crossed whether it be like this or like this over their stomach either way if anything is blocking that middle line of symmetry, it means they're in a defensive stance. So they're not really in the mood to entertain anyone. Another one you can see is if her shoulders or slight are more forward than usual, because this is probably not saying she's defensive yet, but it's trying to say that at some point, she's not really feeling confident at the moment. That's why she's slouching. You can see this for guys. Guys, this is actually a really good, um, when I say posture tutorial for you guys. If you're slouching, you come off as somebody who is an easy prey. But for other men, by the way. For women, it's more of, do not approach me. Don't talk to me. It's the kind of vibe that you give off. 
So guys, if you ever you find yourself slouching, just rise yourself up, spread out, look up, and then you're good. So what are the positive positive signs you should look for when you're actually trying to approach somebody? First thing is look for how how wide is their chest? And I don't mean this in like how much do they bench. No. I mean when they're walking around, are there are is their chest pointing toward is it completely open? Is it pointing outwards? Because if there's nothing you know blocking their chest or this middle region, again I told you that line of symmetry, it means that they're welcoming to other people around them. It means that you can approach them safely. Two, you can and if you see that they're open, plus their face is a, is brighter. You know, so they're smiling, their eyes are wider or wide, and they're not they're kind of like taking up the space they need to take up. That's how you can tell that this person is willing to interact with somebody else. You okay, you see she's she's willing to talk and you know, you look nice, presentable, and she looks she's looking in a good mood and you want to make an approach. So what do you do? First thing is you don't want to, and this is a mistake a lot of guys make. Don't call at her from the distance. If this is a girl you've never talked to before, or even one that you're just getting to know, never call out to her from a distance. Even if you, she's literally three feet ahead of you, never do that. Or never say something from a distance. For example, she's ahead of you by three feet and you're like, hey, uh, hey, how, how, how are you? Hey, when you do that, your voice, she does, she's not paying attention to that. If it's a girl you've never met, you don't know her name, meaning you can't even call her by her name. You can say something, but it's gonna be drowned out from her perspective with all the other noises she's hearing. So when you wanna approach somebody, first thing is you, if you approach from the front, actually first make eye contact with them, give them a smile, that usually helps show eye contact, a nice smile, and then talk to her. This is if you're approaching her from the, from the front, by the way. If you're approaching her from the back, first things first is get her attention and not by yelling at her, all right? You can just say, hey, you can come up to her, like literally right, to her, right there. You can give her a little tap on the shoulder if you want to, you know, nothing too, you know what I mean? You know, I'm nothing too crazy, crazy. Just a little tap on the shoulder or, and just say, hey, miss, and that's it. And then that gets her attention. And then you can start interacting with her. So once you get her attention, how can you tell that she wants to talk or she doesn't want to talk? Something you can tell is again, the face, if her face kind of like made, just goes flat, once she turns to talk to you, she's not interested. Also, when she turns to talk to you, what's turning? Is her body turning or is it just her head turning? For example, let's say you're over here talking to me and while you're talking to me, my head is facing you but my body is facing that way. So I'm talking to you kind of like this. It means I'm not interested in whatever you're saying. So it means that at this point, what, what you're saying to me right now is of low interest to me. Or let's say for example, I do turn to you fully so my chest say you came to me from the front, you're already in my way, I, and I'm talking to you like this, but my arms are like this, or like this, or my legs are in front of my of each other. It means that I'm still not interested in you because even though I'm looking at you, this, me, my arms being crossed like this, indicates a closed stance. So it means, yes, I'm facing you, but I'm not really interested in talking to you. I am just standing here just to be polite. So what are some positives? So first things first is she's gonna face you with her whole body. Head and body are gonna be pointing towards you. Usually, and this is something that everyone should know by now, especially guys, if you don't know it, look at their toes. All right, men are very obvious with this. I don't know why men are way more obvious with this toes thing than women are. So men, if they're interested in something, if they're interested in something, their toes are gonna point to that thing. Guys, try it out at home. Like just randomly think about whatever you're looking at right now, you're focused on, you, your toes are gonna be pointing to that thing. And this is usually from your, whichever one is your dominant foot. It's gonna be pointing to what you're interested in. So if her toes is pointing towards you and she's kind of like not really closed up. But most of the time, keep in mind that if she does start to close off, over time, you should see if she loosens up. Because obviously, when you meet a person for the first time, unless she finds you absolutely gorgeous, she's gonna be a little bit closed off. And then over time, as you're talking to her during that time, she's gonna start loosening up a little bit. And maybe her, her hands will go from this 
to a little bit lower. They'll still be together, but they'll just be lower in front of her. Meaning that you can now see this vulnerable space of her. That's a good sign. Other signs you should look out for is how animated is she? Ladies and gentlemen, this actually applies to any kind of relationship, especially with, with women. From my experience, the more animated a woman is, so she's talking with her hands, her body's moving, you know, as she's talking, she's moving left and right, she's like super energetic and all that stuff. If she's doing all that, she is definitely into you. She definitely wants to talk to you. I think if it's a new person you just met, look at their hands, all right? If they're at least being animated with just one hand, it's a good sign. It means that they're willing to put in the effort to actually animate their body. Because keep in mind that moving your body around takes energy. And for human beings, we don't like to waste energy unnecessarily. So if she's willing to waste that energy for you, that she, it means that she's willing to actually invest and talk to you. So take that as a good sign, Jets. So what can you do to kind of get her attention, all right? A few things you can do. What I would always suggest that comes up a little bit more genial and not like abrasive or creepy, the compliments. Just say, hey, uh, I like your shoes, where do you get it? If she's willing to pick up a conversation from that, then you know that, you know, she's interested in talking about with you and about her shoes. Because <laughs> it kind of goes both ways. Again, a compliment is the easiest way to kind of get someone talking. Or you can just say, hey, um, I'm looking for this, like, ask for directions. I'm looking for this place or that place. Do you know where it is? And they can be like, oh, I know where it is or I don't know where it is. You know, it, can, it should be somewhere in interesting that you guys can start a conversation from. But there are different ways you can approach people in terms of like start, in starting a conversation. But I will suggest the most easiest way would be just to give them a simple compliment. So let's say, okay, now you've approached her, conversation is going, how do you leave? Or how do you say, you know, get her number? All right, I can cover getting her number in a different video. It depends on how many, you know, how many likes this video gets. But how do you know when to start checking out? That, all right, you know, you've approached, you've talked, things are looking good, so you want to bounce. Look at her body language. If her body starts turning away from you, it means there's so much she has to be. And she's just trying to be polite and not let you know directly. But ladies and gentlemen, look at your body language. Once it starts twisting away from you, assuming you had it initially, that's when you should start wrapping the conversation up. Ideally, when you first meet a person, you shouldn't go over five minutes talking with that person because keep in mind that this was a spontaneous meetup. You guys didn't plan this. You should be a little bit more considerate about the other person's time and things this also looks good on you. When you talk to a person, like when I talk to a person that I just want to talk to, I just see them on the street, I think they're pretty interesting, uh, interesting and I walk up to them and I just say, hey, uh, you know, I like this, I like that. What do, you, what do you do? What do you get it? And blah, blah, blah. What I try to make sure to do is I don't take up too much of your time. You have to assume that their time is as valuable as your time. So what, what should happen is you should keep your conversation to five minutes, if at. So once five minutes are up, I'm not saying look at your watch the whole time. I'm just saying just get an initial feel and, you know, and become acquainted with that person. And then once that's done, you shouldn't take too long. But once that's done, you should just start wrapping things up and just say, hey, uh, I got to go to this place or that place. Um, but yeah, it's been nice meeting you. Um, this is when you can ask for the number if you really want to. But um, if you, this is somebody you see on the daily basis or quite often, you don't really have to do it at that time. But if this is a person you just saw and you just, I don't know, just spontaneously just want to go talk to them, yeah, you can say, hey, uh, yeah, let me get your number. I can catch you on this, this, that. Um, but yeah, let's chill some time. Boom, that's it, and you move on. I try to make this video as brief as possible and um, answering your questions. Uh, we really do appreciate our subscribers and uh, we I, I will personally try to take the time to answer your questions. So feel free to ask them down below. Um, in the next live stream, we can probably announce the next question we're gonna do or I'm gonna do, depends on what uh, Duke and I are planning on doing with the live streams. But um, yeah, and almost forgot, almost forgot. The book I wanted to recommend to you is, uh, let's see, it's right here. This one. Okay, it's reversed right now because of the camera. I wish you flipped that. But honestly, what it is, it's uh, 
What Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro. So this is an ex-FBI agent, by the way. So he is super good at actually reading somebody's body language. Get this book, all right? It's about, I don't know, 20 bucks on Amazon. It's a definitely a good book if you really wanna know how to read a person's body language. And this book has helped me, not just with women or anything like that, because this book is fairly new, actually. But not just with women, but just even just interacting with potential business partners. Um, say like people I want to actually you know get to know in the future, or just say like an interview, a job interview. You're going for an interview, and you want to know how you how you're faring in the middle of that interview. So get the book. It's fairly cheap, honestly. Uh, I'm a, I'm an avid reader. I have like a huge ass library in one of my other rooms. So. I can probably even do more recommendations for you guys. I even have one book here that I'm currently reading. But um, yeah, check it out. It's gonna be worth your time. So if you wanna get better with socializing, men or women, all right? Women, I do suggest you get this book too because you really wanna know if a guy is playing games with you or if he's actually being serious about you. Well, that's me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, cut it short right now, but um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next one.